Hello everyone. This video will be a continuation of the previous video covering the PT-76, this time covering the countries where the PT-76 was exported to, as well as their service history within these countries. The PT-76, like most other Cold War Soviet vehicles, saw substantial export to nations across Eastern Europe, Africa and Asia. Around 2,000 such tanks were exported by the Soviet Union, out of which 941 were PT-76B models. Finland received 12 PT-76B export light tanks from the Soviet Union in 1964 and were used until 1994. Finland also purchased 118 BTR-50s in the same period. After the retirement of the light tanks, a few were transformed into driver training vehicles for the BTR-50s. The main difference was the removal of the main gun and mantlet. In its place, a sheet of plexiglass was bolted over the gap. These were named PTA and were also retired in 2018 alongside all the remaining BTR-50 APCs. East Germany ordered 170 units in 1956, which were delivered by 1957 and 1959. These were used in exercises across the northern coast and even exercises with the Polish army and Soviet naval forces. When East and West Germany were reunited, the light tanks were scrapped or sold off to various countries. A unique and tragic incident happened on the 24th of August 1965, when the 1st Reconnaissance Battalion, stationed in Gross Bennetts, invited schoolchildren on an amphibious ride across the local Rywind Lake. For the ride, one PT-76 light tank was used, with 21 children and guardians, plus the driver situated in the hull. They were standing across the length of the hull, however, at one point, the children towards the back moved forwards to the bow of the tank, either to get away from the hot engine bay, or to hear what the driver was saying. This brought additional weight to the front, which sunk and took water over the top further sinking the tank. Eventually, the water reached the driver's hatch, which was open. From there, the sinking of the tank was rapid. Everyone was able to exit, but the sinking happened in the middle of the lake, getting to shore was hard. The driver and 14 children survived, but seven boys drowned in the accident. A local diver found the bodies and also uncoupled the tank, entering through the turret hatch. Lastly, he connected the tank with a tow hitch, through which the tank was removed and pressed back into military service. India first ordered 178 PT-76 light tanks from the Soviet Union in 1962 and received them between 1964 and 1965. These vehicles first saw combat in the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965, but cemented their success in 1971. This occurred during the Battle of Garibpa, where Indian and Bangladeshi troops, supported by Indian PT-76 tanks, invaded the then Pakistani region of Garibpa. India would continue to fight weeks later in what had now become the 1971 Indo-Pakistani War or the Bangladesh Liberation War. 100 of the new popular tanks would continue to serve in the Indian Army until 2009, when they were finally retired. These were kept in reserve and eventually scrapped, used as targets for the Indian Air Force or in museums and memorials. India even converted an M4 Sherman medium tank with the more potent 76mm gun from the PT-76, mainly due to the availability and reliability of M4 Sherman components. While the original guns were clearly obsolete and possibly worn out, it is unlikely that it kept the stabiliser. India first ordered PT-76 tanks in 1962 and received them by 1964, but had at most 170 such tanks in service. They were ordered for the cavalry, but most served with the Indian Marines. These first saw combat during the Indonesian-Malaysian border war in 1965, where an Indonesian Marine Brigade was equipped with the brand new PT-76 tanks, but also BTR-50 APCs and BRDM-2 armoured cars. Following the G30S, the 30th of September movement, coup de tat and political issues that followed in Indonesia, the USSR placed an export embargo on the country, terminating any export of tanks and spare parts for the Indonesian vehicles. This led to the Indonesian Marines having to cannibalise their tanks to keep them in service. The PT-76 saw further combat, primarily in the invasion of East Timor, where the tanks gave a decisive upper hand in combat against a weak opposition. In the 1990s, despite the embargo, the PT-76 still constituted a large part of the armoured fighting force of the Indonesian Marines. Thus, a plan to modernise the tanks started. The main upgrades were giving the tanks a Belgian 90mm Cockrell Mark III and a Detroit Diesel 5 92 290 horsepower engine, increasing the top speed to 58 km an hour. This version is sometimes called PT-76M not to be confused with the Soviet one. A curious vehicle is the Indonesian PT-76 with the gun removed and a BM-1417 MLRS mounted on top of the turret. 
Poland was among the first to buy the PT-76 from the Soviets, as early as 1955, with 300 units ordered, which were delivered between 1957 and 1958. These were used both as reconnaissance tanks within tank division subunits, but also coastal units, namely the 7th Lusatian Landing Division. Poland did conceive its own upgrades for the PT-76. Most notable is the DHSK roof-mounted heavy machine gun, which could be operated by the loader when the hatch was open. This upgrade was not given to all tanks. North Vietnam first ordered the tanks in 1964, buying a total of 500 units, which were delivered from 1965 to 1973. These were second-hand, and some of these tanks came as aid from the Soviet Union for their efforts against Western forces during the Vietnam War. The numbers grew from a single battalion in 1965 to three regiments by 1971. Locally, the tanks were called ZTS, GIAP, meaning ironclad, leading to Vietnamese tanks being called as such in Western literature. While it was deadly when fighting weakly prepared Laotian troops, it struggled against American troops equipped with anti-tank weapons and heavier medium tanks. After unification in 1976, the PT-76 still remained an important part of the Vietnamese tank force, which still had around 300 in service as of 2020. Vietnam also received a large amount of Chinese Type 62 and Type 63 light tanks and are used together. As a consequence of its large export numbers, the PT-76 saw service in a number of conflicts. These included conflicts as early as the Hungarian Uprising in 1956, Vietnam War, Laotian War, both Indo-Pakistani Wars, South African Border War, Six-Day War, Invasion of Czechoslovakia, Yom Kippur War, Indonesian Invasion of East Timor, Iran-Iraq War, 1990-1991 Gulf War, Balkan Wars, Ten-Day War, Second Chechen War, and Invasion of Iraq, to name a few. The light tank's effectiveness has been controversial, with critiques on both sides of the spectrum. On one hand, it has been widely criticised, as it showcased poor performance in battle, as its armour was thin enough to be penetrated by a variety of weapons, and its armament ineffective against main battle tanks. It is worth arguing, however, that many such incidents were cases of using the PT-76 as a regular MBT slash support tank in favourable locations, when the tank was designed to undertake amphibious assault roles and end off potential attacks until heavier tanks arrived. On the other hand, the PT-76 has been praised in countries like India and Indonesia, which used it for a long time after decisive victories. On the other hand, however, the PT-76 has been praised in countries like India and Indonesia, which used it for a long time after decisive victories using the excellent amphibious capabilities and the main armament, still capable of dealing with obsolete and lightly armoured targets, as often encountered in such parts of the world. The success of the tank in these situations has also been attributed to good tactics and correct usage of the tanks. In the Hungarian Revolution of 1956 against the Soviet-controlled communist government, Soviet troops stationed within Hungary entered Budapest on 4th of November. Sources disagree on how many tanks and AFVs were used by the Soviets, with numbers ranging between 4,000 to as low as 1,100, with the latter being more realistic. Revolutionaries had no weapons to reliably fight off Soviet tanks, many of which were IS-3 or T-55 tanks, and a few of the brand new PT-76 tanks. However, due to the narrow streets of central Budapest, Molotov cocktails were used by revolutionaries to set tanks on fire. Around 700 Soviet troops were lost. The Prague Spring began in January of 1968, after Alexander Dubček was elected as first secretary in the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. He strived for decentralization from the Soviet Union, and encouraged more democratic reforms, loosening controls and restrictions on the media or freedom of speech. The main reform was the splitting of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Socialist Republic and Slovak Socialist Republic. Naturally, the Soviets were not too happy about these reforms, and during the night of the 20th and 21st of August, invaded the CSSR, with help from other Warsaw Pact nations, Poland, Hungary, and Bulgaria. It is worth noting that there were attempts by the USSR to reverse the reforms by Dubček, diplomatically, but to no avail. Around 200,000 troops alongside 2,000 AFVs invaded the country, according to the Washington Post. Despite the quick occupation, civilian sabotage and resistance continued for nearly eight months, leading to around 137 dead and 500 wounded. There were several PT-76 tanks present, but like other historians have noticed, documentation is scarce. All tanks, including PT-76 tanks, were painted with white stripes, one going across the hull and one perpendicular to the previous across the turret forming a cross shape on the turret roof. This was done for aerial recognition in cities, because during the Battle of Berlin, many Allied aircraft mistook Soviet armour for German and shot them. 
The Chechen War is one of the last conflicts where the PT-76 saw combat, and were used from the very beginning. The tanks were mostly used in front of infantry, protecting them from enemy fire. Likewise, they were also used in defensive roadblocks, strategic checkpoints, and various escorting missions. As an example, a PT-76 was seen near the Grozny Presidential Palace. Unit 3723 is proof that the light tanks were also used in populated areas against Chechen militants. The unit was from Nelchik, and in December of 1994 entered Chechnya. On the 18th of April 1995, Unit 3723 entered the town of Bamut. On the 18th of April 1995, Unit 3723 entered the town of Bamut. At least one PT-76 participated in the assault, commanded by Lieutenant Sergei Golubev. He made his way through to the centre of the town, alongside a T-72, commanded by Vyashilev Kubinin. The battle lasted over two hours. Golubev's PT-76 was quickly immobilised, while the T-72 was set on fire. Yet Golubev managed to extirpate one of the heavy machine gun nests situated in a building, thus covering the retreating Russian troops. His tank was eventually destroyed, killing Golubev and his crew. It was only after the battle it was remarked that after an inspection of Golubev's PT-76, the tank withstood two hits from RPGs and destroyed three enemy positions. After the assault on Bamut, the unit commander Alexander Korshinov and warrant officer Alexander Maximov recalled, We are here from the very beginning of the Chechnya campaign. Started at Chervyanaya, Vinogradnaya, Grozny. On February 18th, we left, returned, then came back again. Now Guderms, Argun, Samashki, and now Bamut. Korshinov, posthumously, was originally intended to be presented with the Order of Russia, but was awarded Order of Courage instead. Two years after the end of the First Chechen War, in September of 1998, a PT-76 light tank battalion from the 8th Independent Regiment was dispatched to the city of Nelchik. These saw service in the Second Chechen War, where crews, acknowledging the poor armour and vulnerability to RPGs, would add on improvised armour, like spare track links and rubber panels. Despite their obsolescence, their mere presence must have improved morale to their own soldiers and frustrated the opponents. One riot police officer recalled November 1999, With a tank, even though it's light, you feel much more confident than, say, in a BTR or BRDM. After all, a 76mm gun is much more hefty than a machine gun, even a heavy one. With suppressing fire from the tanks, there were no attacks on us. A list made out of official reports covers around 50-60% to 60 of the official losses to Russian tanks during the wars. Only one PT-76 is mentioned. This report is of exactly that PT-76 tank and T-72 from the assault of Bamut. There is also a possibility of a third tank, but that is unconfirmed. A video from the opposing militants from 26th of April shows the two tanks. Aside from confirming the information above, it brings up the possibility that the T-72 was hit by an RPG from a school building and it caught fire. The reports also give more information on the PT-76. After receiving two hits, it caught fire, disabling the gun. The tank then drove towards a mosque and rammed a tower, possibly a minaret, crushing the structure down. The commander, Golubev, died under the rubble. However, according to Associated Press, the tank was close to the T-72 in an open area with no debris surrounding it. In the end, the entire crew died, consisting of Commander and Gunner Lieutenant Sergei Golubev, Loader Private A Klimchuk, and Driver Private A and Driver Private A Kudrutsev. In the memoirs of K. Masilev, it is recounted how, during the retaking of Bamut, a PT-76 was found abandoned on a hill, clearly left by the Chechen forces. It is possible that it was Golubev's tank, as there were no other PT-76 tanks in the vicinity. It was blown up. The light tank enjoyed a lengthy production run, starting in 1952 and ending in 1967, with a total of around 12,000 units built, of which 2,000 were exported. Out of these, 4,172 were PT-76Bs, with 941 in turn for export. In November 1990, there were still 602 PT-76 light tanks still in service in the European side of the USSR alone. After the dismantling of the USSR in 1991, a large portion of them went to the newly independent states. PT-76s would still see service as late as the Chechen wars in the 1990s, but so far, none in the war of Donbass. With the start of production of the BMP-1, the PT-76 was redundant for the Soviets. Just as mobile and amphibious, with a new gun and most importantly, able to transport troops, this vehicle also made the PT-76 brother, BTR-50, redundant. After Russian equipment was withdrawn from Chechnya in 2006, PT-76 tanks were all placed in the reserves of the Russian Defense Ministry, 
officially ending their active service in Russia. The PT-76 was one of many post-war tanks that was designed with World War II battles in mind, for a war that never happened. Yet it still is a more controversial tank than many others. On one hand, its obsolescence from the day it left the factories has been seen as its weakest side, with an outdated gun and paper-thin armour. On the other hand, its great water-crossing capabilities and lower price compared to medium tanks, or MBTs, launched it into mass production and an export success, with nations such as Syria buying them. Its practicality and design prompted the Chinese and North Koreans to produce tanks very similar to it. While it was not as high-tech or capable as some of its contemporary Soviet vehicles, it proved that, when used as intended by its designers and Soviet doctrine, it was quite not as poor as it seemed. And that concludes this video. You can find other articles and more information regarding the PT-76 on our website. Ratings, comments, and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. Be sure to... Ratings, comments, and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. We also have a link to our Discord server in the description below. If you would like to help us continue and refine our work, also continue donating to our Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.